I remember getting on the bus and it just felt so odd because it was like everybody downstairs was in like flowing conversation and then I got on and it just stopped. Hello, my name is Dominic. I am 25 years old and I live in London. Hi, my name is Erin. I live in Nottingham and I'm 17 years old. Hi, I'm Kanea. I'm 18 and I'm from West Yorkshire. There was a time during my school, secondary school, where um, our school put together this group where they would they would help to support uh, black and uh, black African and Caribbean boys. I went to an all boys school as like a support group for their learning and teaching, and I was selected to be a part of that group. And it was it was it was really early on, so it was like year seven, year eight when I first year seven when I first got into the secondary school so they went and put me into this uh, group of support for boys and at the time it wasn't like I needed the support but they had selected me for it and when uh, when my mother found out that's what they were doing uh, she wasn't very happy with it because it was a it was a group where the rest of the boys that were in there there were boys who uh, yes they needed support but they had already placed me inside of it without actually knowing what my academic capabilities were already, what, what my academic capabilities were. Yeah, so I think that in the UK particularly, I feel like a lot of the racism is very subtle. And I feel like, sort of like I feel like mainly it's a lot of <clears throat> like prejudices. When you just walk into a place, you can kind of just feel the energy in the room, like if you're, I know, noticeably different from them. I feel like there's a lot of like that kind of prejudice when you first enter somewhere. I went to a primary school where I was the only black child there out of 210 pupils. Um, and it wasn't something that was significant to me. I definitely noticed because you just, you do in those situations, but it was definitely one of those things where I couldn't go to a teacher if I was having an issue. I couldn't, there was nobody who looked like me. There was nobody who understood my culture whatsoever. Um, and when I went to high school, high school was a lot more multicultural and I wasn't used to my own culture. So the only exp exposure to my own culture was my own family. So seeing other black people or other Asian people, it was something completely new to me. Um, and then I ended up moving schools and I ended up in another school where I was the only black person out of the entire class. So I think it's weird because in different environments I've seen how different people react to me being the only black person there. It, it, it does it does anger me because my point is that we're all one and the same, we're all you know, we're all human. We all have the same blood, same sorts of makeup. You shouldn't let the uh, pigmentation of your skin color define or characterize you in any sort of type or any sort of way. There's no need for an ag any sort of aggression or oppression to happen on one person simply because you may have been, you, they, you know, the color of the skin. Um, to be honest, I just felt lonely, really, because there wasn't really anybody I could really talk to. Um, so yeah, I think I'm mostly just feeling lonely and just not being able to talk to anyone about it really. Yeah. I don't. Um, in terms of a, a single voice being heard, no. No, it, it's, it's a shame it's come to this point for us to finally be, you know, making a majority stand. But in terms of an individual member making a platform, there isn't much. There isn't much available because what happens is that the uh, system just files it away. They just yeah, ignore it, really. Or oh, that's how I feel about it. I feel like these days, I feel like everybody does have social media. So I do have social media and I feel like I would be able to express or talk about matters that I felt I needed to on my social media platforms but that is always going to stay marginally within my circle 
It's not like my post is going to go viral necessarily. Um, and I think, so yeah, like I, I think I, I have the opportunity to like express and talk about it, but I don't think I necessarily have opportunity to make a huge impact, if that makes sense. With, with regards to change, if your voice isn't heard, action is then needed. Mm. So I would say that what we're doing now in, ter in forms of our peaceful protesting is a form of where we are therefore making an action that demands a change. So things can't go back to how they are. I feel like there needs to be a, a more, I feel like organizations need to be more united I feel like, um, yeah, like if I had something that I wanted to, or even if something happened and like, I didn't want to go to the police by or something like that, I, just, I don't know who I would turn to. Just, yeah, I'd just say, just be open to cultures, other cultures, learn other people's history. You don't have to know everything about them, because I don't, but just know, have like a overall understanding of just other people's backgrounds and just be open to it, so. Justice. I would like to say justice is fair. That's what I'd like to say. Justice is fair is what I'd like to say. But I feel that in times that we are in now, it's not. I think justice is a human right. <laughs> so very good. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think everybody should have justice. I think I don't think it's fair for anybody to, um, yeah. I just, I just class wealth anything. Like I think justice. Like you should have justice by anyone's name. I wouldn't want justice not done by me. <laughs> <laughs>